Good afternoon ladies and gents. I'm going to show you how to put together one of these fabulous vintage transport book box cards today. Um, as you can see it's a 3D shadow box with a wraparound cover. Um, the covers are all printed with a like a faux leather effect with the stitching. Oh, you can see that. That wraps all the way around so it looks like a book and then when you open it up it's a box. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to put one of these together. They are a die cut kit, so all you have to do is to pop everything out and then put it together. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so these are the sheets that you get to start off with. As you can see, if you turn it over, you can see under the light in there that they're all pre die cut and pre scored. You get the two sheets in the set. So again, you've got your front cover there and you've also then got um, a set of die cut sentiment down the left hand side of the second sheet. So I'm going to go ahead and pop all these out and I'll be back with you in a few seconds. Okay, and we're back. Right, so this is taken from the first sheet. Now, there is an aperture in these. So I've left it in just for the second, but it just literally just pops out. So you are left with a hole there. Um, it does say on certain areas where they're, they're to be stuck down, um, but everything is um, scored for you. You can see the score lines there, and there are certain areas also within that are cut as well. So it is fairly straightforward. So we'll deal with one piece at a time. So this is the main part of the box. So this is the bit that makes up the carcass here. This is the wooden frame bit. Okay, so you can put that together separately. Um, and this is the cover, which is the, the full leather effect one. Now there are two, uh, oh, you can see there, two little slits in there that do also pop out. There you go, there's one. And there's just take that one and there's the other one there you go literally it just falls out so you are left with two little slits there I'll show you what they're for in a few minutes but that basically is the front wraparound cover and the slits need to be at the top and at the bottom okay so you can go ahead and just fold those with your fingers uh, run along with a bone fold if you want to but you don't really need to okay so that's done and ready to be used in a moment so this is the main box Okay, so what I always do with this is I always turn it over so I can see where the score lines are. Okay, and as I say, you can see the score lines really, really easily. All right, and all I do is literally just go around and then fold on all of the score lines just so that they've all had at least one crease in. So this will only take a few minutes. When you get the hang of doing these, literally you can put one together in, in less than five minutes. So tabs. So go over every score line so that you can see exactly where everything's supposed to do. So if you just fold everything inwards, okay, there's nothing that needs to be folded back. There's no uh, mountain valley kind of difficult folds on these. They all fold inwards from the outside. So as long as you fold it in, you'll have everything done. Now there you go. So that's it, they're all folded, uh, all scored, at least once, ready to go. Now, this box was designed so that it can be put together um, without any glue, or without any adhesive at all. It's supposed to fit together um, without any adhesive at all. You can do that, that's not a problem. It will hold, it will stay in place. But if you're going to give this to somebody, then I do recommend that you use some form of tape or some sort of form of glue to put it together, just to add a bit of um, rigidity or just to make it a little bit more sturdy. Okay, now the easiest way to do it is you only need to put tape in a couple of places, all right? These tabs here, you can put glue or tape on but you don't have to you can if you want and the inside here as well and the inside flap on this one you can also put glue or tape on if you want to um, for the purposes of this video and to make it speedy I'm not going to use glue I'm just going to use a double-sided 
um, tape runner, which I've got here. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to run it just down, move that out of the way, just down the inside of that strip, and I'm going to run it down the inside of this one. Okay, so that's all I'm going to do. All right, so starting at one side, I'm going to fold it in. So this tab and this tab are then upright inside that box. And then I'm just going to stick and push them down onto the adhesive I've just put on. Okay, now this, that bit then sticks up. You literally just fold that over and push the tab into the slit hole. So you've got a little bit of a lip coming through that slit there. Okay, that's one side done. And you just repeat the process at the other side. Hold it flat. Can you see? I'm not sure they're in that. Just move that out of the way so you can see it better. We'll bend that back a little bit. Okay. So it's in. And then stick down in, stick down, and then that flap just goes over the inside, push down into the slit, and then smooth it out. And there you go. You've got your base box constructed very, very simply and easily. Okay. You can now, if you want to, decorate the inside with your topper. I'll bring the other one back in. Okay, now you can see that the aperture, there is a piece that fell out. Now you can use this if you want to, to stick in into there, to use it as a piece of backing um, topper. I like to use a, something different. Okay, so all I've got on this one is I've just cut a square of paper, which I'm going to put into the bottom. I will glue that down. Now this is taken from our Vintage Transport paper stack. Um, you can see it's railway posters. So all I'm going to do is just stick some tape down on that and then stick that into the base. So that when the cover goes down, that ah, looks nice. Okay, so that's still open and still not stuck. I'm then going to add my topper into that. Now I've taken one of our toppers, since we're having a railway theme, and all I'm going to do for that is just pop some foam pads on that, just to give it a bit of depth and dimension. And of course you can use any type of topper in here at all. It doesn't have to be a train, you can use anything you want. with it being deep as well, it's probably just under an inch deep. You know, you can put charms and flowers or anything like that in there and it won't get in the way. So I'm then going to just lay that, I don't want my head to get in the way of the, the video, about the center. There we go. Okay, so finally, if you want to make it more sturdy, you can add some glue or adhesive to these flaps around here. And I'm going to just add a little bit of um, the, the tape runner. Okay, so just there, just there. just down there. Okay, and then I'm just going to tuck those in and tuck that in and then just squeeze it together. Now like I said these will hold on their own but I do like just to have a little bit of glue just for that little bit of sturdiness. Okay, now, if like me, you don't like to see little white edges, you can go over that with a, um, a sponge daub, a little bit of Distressic if you want to, or even with a, a light brown um, 
alcohol pen, one of your, your Copic Spectrum Noirs or even a Pro Marker. Um, but I like to use a finger dober for mine. So I'll just grab some ink. And then literally I'm just going to run it along the edge like that. Just so that it hides a little bit of that white. Not too much, because I don't want it to dirty it completely. There you go, just run a little bit of ink along the edge. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, so get rid of that. So there's the basic box. Now you can, at this stage, if you want to, pop one of your sentiments in there. Okay, these are the ones that were left down the left hand side. So whatever occasion it is, you've got more than one that you can choose from. Get well soon. Happy birthday to my best friend, best wishes or on your special day. Okay, I'm just going to pop in the uh, happy birthday one. So again, just pop that out of the die cut sheet. Now, nobody likes the little lugs, so you can just either snip them off or just give them a light sand. Again, if you want to, if you want to add that little bit of distress to it, you can just go over the edges and give it a little bit that aged look. But again you don't have to, this is purely just preference. I just think it helps to hide those little bits of raw white edge that you sometimes get. You're not going to see it anyway because it's going to be inside the box but at least you know it's done. Because uh, the old saying of if it's worth doing, it's worth doing well. Okay. So there's my little happy birthday sentiment. All I'm going to do for that one, just turn it over and again, pop it up on a couple of foam pads. That's when you've got nails. And then I'm just going to tuck that into that bottom right hand corner there. Okay, so I think now we're ready to put the cover on. Okay, so as I said, you have the slit at the top and the slit at the bottom. Now they're there to hold those bits that come out there. I'll just catchment points. Now these will help for you to position your cover. If you lay it over, you can actually slide it backwards and forwards. If they're inside, you can slide it for a little bit of adjustment just so that you can get it right up against the spine before you stick it down. Now what I do is I normally slide it in and then I'll grab my adhesive. Run some adhesive down the middle. Again you can use glue if you want to. If you are putting this together with tape it might be worthwhile putting it together with red liner tape because that is like really ultra strong. So I'll push it up against the spine and then literally just push the spine into it so it's now stuck. There you go. It's now stuck. Okay, so you've now got the box attached to its spine. You can flip it over, okay, and then you can attach, put some glue on there, which is, this is the area there that you need to glue down. So you can either do that or you can use, like I say, a tape runner if you want. But if you try and stay see, within the glue area, then there won't be a problem. And then literally just fold it down flat, tucking in the little slit areas there. Give it a rub, and you can turn it over, open it up, and just push it down. And there you go. You have one book box ready to go. Like most things, you can embellish it further if you want to. You can use this bit on the inside so that it mirrors. It's entirely up to you. There's extra elements on those sheets that you can use if you want to. Extra sentiments if you want to use another one of these on the front. So for example, we've used the happy birthday one. Um, if you want to use the to my best friend. Again, just give it a, a little bit of a a rub just to get rid of those little nubbins I think they're called. 
chads, nubbins, whatever. And then just go over the edges again, just to get rid of those raw edge, the raw white. Just to give that a little bit of steam soot kind of effect. Because I've used a steam train one. And then just run around the edges. And then all you have to do is either stick it to the front or you can put it on foam pads if you want to to add that little bit of extra dimension. I think I'm going to pop mine on pads. Okay, and there you have it. One quick and easy vintage transport book box. Don't forget, this is just very basic. I've just literally just popped it out and put it together using a little bit of backing paper um, from my stash or, um, and a topper that I had from the vintage transport set. Um, and that's it, but you can go a lot further with this if you want to. You could cover the inside here with backing paper if you want to. Before you fix the front down on the aperture, you could put acetate in there. You could fill it, make it into a shaker box if you want to, with bits of fluff and glitter and all the rest of it if you wanted to. Or you could put some 3D, more 3D embellishments in there. You could go in onto the train itself or onto your topper what you've got if you've got glass and add glossy accents you can put glitter onto it you can add gems in the corners you can go oh, you know as as far as you want to with it but the basic structure the basic construction is what i wanted to show you today and there you go one vintage transport book box